So in this lecture, we're going to examine thermodynamics and kinetics, and we're going to look at two important misconceptions that exist whenever you deal with these two fields of study. So let's suppose we have the following reaction taking place. So we have two reactants, A and B, react in some way to produce two products, C and D. And let's suppose we wait some amount of time and equilibrium is established. That means the rate of the full reaction is equal to the rate, rate of reverse. And so that our concentrations or reacts and products is not changing, but our reaction is still taking place. We have dynamic equilibrium. So let's examine what thermodynamics and what kinetics can tell us about our equilibrium of this reaction. Thermodynamics tells us what our equilibrium actually looks like. In other words, how much product have we produced and how much reactant has been used up. So things like change in enthalpy or change in Gibbs free energy tells us how much of our products we have and how much of our reactants we have used up. In other words, if the products are more stable than the reactants, that means Thermodynamics tells us that our equilibrium will lie far to the product side, far to the right. If these are more stable, our reaction is exothermic going this way, and that means a lot of the reactants A and B will be used up to produce a lot of C and D. Now, kinetics does not talk about stability. Kinetics talks about how quickly our equilibrium is achieved. So there is a large difference between thermodynamics and kinetics, but people often confuse the two. So let's make that distinction. Let's look at the following diagram. Let's suppose our x-axis is reaction progress, while our y-axis is the change in enthalpy. Remember, once again, change in enthalpy is simply the difference in the energy of our products, the energy of the bonds in the products, and the energy of the bonds in our reactant. So, notice that in this case, in this reaction, our energy of the product C and D is lower than the energy of A and B, and that means if we subtract these two, we get a negative delta H, which means we have an exothermic reaction. So, our bond energies, our bonds are more stable in the product than the reactant, and that is thermodynamics. What about kinetics? Where do we find kinetics in this diagram? Well, kinetics is given by this red delta H. So this red delta H gives us the difference in energy between our, pro between our reactants and our transition state. And the transition state is what tells us the kinetics of our reaction. So the higher this mountain is, the higher the energy of our transition state is, the lower the rate of our reaction. Likewise, the lower this bump is, the lower the mountain is, the lower the energy of our transition state is, and the quicker our reaction takes place. Once again, the stability of the products and reactants deals with thermodynamics, but the stability of our transition state deals with kinetics. So let's look at the following first misconception. Exothermic reactions proceed rapidly. So let's read this and then let's discuss what this means. So this above reaction is in fact exothermic. So what this statement states is that this exothermic reaction will be achieved very quickly. Equilibrium will be achieved quickly. So let's see if we can translate this sentence into another way. So, because the products are thermodynamically more stable than reactants, this is the same thing as saying our reaction is exothermic. The rate is high. So we're basically stating that thermodynamics is the same thing as kinetics, but it's not. So that means this statement cannot be true. So, if the change in enthalpy is uh, negative, that means the bonds of the products are more stable than the reactant. Rate, on the other hand, has nothing to do with the stability of the reactants or the products. The rate talks about the stability of our transition state. 
So that means exothermic reactions do not necessarily proceed rapidly. In fact, if we have a relatively large transition state, so if our energy, called the activation energy, is high, no matter how exothermic re our reaction is, no matter how stable our products are, our reaction will not take place unless enough energy is input into our reaction for the uh, reactants to overcome this mountain. So once again, rate is determined by the energy of the transition state. And this is known as the activation energy given by the red delta here. So let's look at the second misconception that is very similar to the first. The more stable the products, the faster our reaction is taking place. Once again, we're equating stability of products we're equating thermodynamics and kinetics. So stability of products does not equal to reaction rate. In other words, it does not matter how stable our products are, if this transition state energy is very high, our reaction rate will be very low. So this statement is not true. And let's look at an example where this is true. So let's look at the following combustion reaction. So we have our methane react with two moles of oxygen molecule to produce two moles of water and one mole of carbon dioxide. So generally speaking, combustion reactions are very exothermic. That means the bond energies of our products are much more stable. The bonds are more stable than the reactants. But the rate of our reaction, of our combustion reaction, is very low. In other words, if we look at the energy diagram, we'll find it that the transition state has a lot of energy. A lot of energy must be inputted for these two molecules to interact in the proper way to form our products. And that's exactly why whenever you want to burn something, you have to use a match. That match acts as an energy source to provide energy to surmount this energy barrier or activation energy. Without that match, this reaction will not take place.